Electra Voice is founded in 1927. Uh, that is, that's uh, correct. That's the first, that's the year we built our first PA system. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. Um, uh, but we, we founded Electra Voice uh, by being microphone engineers. They started repairing uh, microphones back in 1927, and it all spun out of control from there. So EV starts as a microphone company at, at its core. That is correct. That's what we do, man. That is correct. We do mics. And, you know, throughout the years, you look at uh, the incredible achievements that this brand has had and the, the microphones that have been used for world events. John Glenn's Orbit of the Moon, right? Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. You bet. Right? I mean, these are, you know, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. These are iconic phrases that are captured, you know, at global events you that bet. that really are at the core of who we are. Um, and you look at the evolution of our company and all the stuff that we do right now, you know, it all still comes back to microphones. So, I wanted to spend some time with you today talking a little bit about, you know, my favorite mics that we make, and, and that's our broadcast mics. I mean, um, again, with how iconic they are, I mean, there's almost not a radio studio in the planet that you don't see these things, right? right? I mean, they're everywhere. Absolutely correct. Or recording studios, um, because as they were developed as uh, voice microphones for broadcast. They've been adopted because they're so good at what they do. Uh, noise isolation, uh, variable D, so no change in tone with distance, all these things. Uh, you know, uh, 1927, we were repairing mics and, and building mics. In 30, 1932, we invented the humbucking coil, and we were the first to use that in a microphone. Yeah, well, before they even put it in a guitar pickup. 25 right? years in, before they put it in a mics, guitar. Right? Exactly. <laughs> you know, and you think of what that did for guitars. Uh, 25 years later, it was the same scenario with the microphone in 1932, right? Yeah. They were single coil, low output, noisy. You put a humbucking coil in a microphone, now you have high output, no noise, just, uh, again, revolutionizing microphones. Yeah, so, well, with these mics in particular, you know, um, we've got some here that are um, older than 50 years, the yep. RE20, yep. um, and we've got some that's uh, actually just a couple of months old, <laughs> that's right. uh, which is really cool. It's kind of uh, a, an iteration of the same mic, but um, you know, the point uh, for me is that it, even after all this time, these mics are still incredibly relevant, um, even in some ways more so now with podcasting, content creation at home. Exactly. I mean, far more people are in the market for a microphone now than ever before, Correct. right? It used to be just kind of pros or musicians and exactly. things like that. But now it's, hey, I want to talk about gardening. I need a microphone. Absolutely. Uh, the content creation in and of itself is, is that next thing. And while at the highest levels in broadcast, our mics have always been there. So the best voices you've ever heard are, are, have been captured on an RE20. Everyone getting into content creation today you know, we want to bring their level of performance and how they sound and how professional they come across by getting them into the best mics that the world-class guys use every day. And yeah. they're affordable, Mike. Absolutely. I mean, you know, there's no doubt they're more expensive than just your crappy USB mic that you might buy off, you know, some random website and plug it in and hope you get good results. But, you know, at the end of the day, you spend a little bit more, you get a professional quality microphone. It's going to encourage you to keep doing what you're doing, you know, instead of just fighting the, the technology and it sounds terrible, you know, you want to sound like you, you want to have some warmth to it and get your message out without any worries of, 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 of a bunch of junk. So that's really what these mics are all about. So I want to do a couple of things that I, I, I'm, I'd like to talk about each each of these mics, their unique characteristics, and then I'm hoping that that you can actually uh, help me test them out. And and you know, we're right now we're not using these mics, but um, you know, if we capture the audio from each, I'd love to give uh, you know people a chance to to hear you know what the, the unique sonic characteristics of each of these. So, um, but starting down on your end, um, what's what's kind of that first one there? What are we what are we looking at there? All right, so on the end here, Mike, we have the RE320, okay? A large diaphragm dynamic. 
And when we talk about large diaphragm dynamic, the larger the diaphragm, the more frequency response it has, uh, the quicker the transients, that kind of thing. So it's capturing uh, a lot. It has variable D technology in it, which was pioneered by the original RE20. Um, variable D, now what is that exactly? I've, I've heard it, but how does it work? Okay, um, well the whole reason these, all of these microphones are iconic in the broadcast world uh, was based around our technology of variable D. Uh, variable D means it does not matter how close you get onto this microphone or how far you back up, your tone doesn't change which in normal microphones is pretty inherent with any microphone. Um, the, the closer you get to the mic, the more low-end buildup yeah, happens. Boomy, boomy and, and yeah. all that stuff. So in broadcast, it's really important in, in a studio when you're broadcasting, your moving head's around. moving around, right? And you might be a little closer, a little further away. You don't want the tone to change. You just want the volume to change with right. distance. The further away you go, the less volume. Uh, but it doesn't change that beautiful voice uh, a broadcaster, you know, uh, is after. So right, that's yeah, really and that, that's, a, that's a really cool feature, and that's actually done by the venting on the sides, right? The, it looks cool, but that's actually the function of variable D that's patented, right, as you, uh, because it's capturing air, as you get up closer, instead of building up, it's allowing that air to pass through the body of the mic, and it's not not building up oh, yeah. and getting getting yep. that boomy sound. So I want to definitely listen to that later when when we're when we're going through these microphones. So Perfect. Yeah. Um, I, I I I really want to hear that. But you also mentioned that all you know uh, the RE three twenty is a dynamic, but all of these are dynamics, right? That is correct. The interesting thing about that is I think there's this misnomer out there that condenser mics are better, and that's not the case whatsoever. I mean, dynamics are are generally more durable, number one, but also when you think about, um, you know, how people, especially people at home, using these in less than professional studios, right? Exactly. Um, dynamics are far less susceptible to external noises and, and, and hearing all the junk around you. It's really uh, much better at, at much getting focused. what it's supposed to get and, exactly. and not hearing Rejecting. everything around you. Yep. Yeah. So I think that's important as we talk about all these to, to recognize that they are all dynamics. Um, you know, no phantom power is required. You know, um, you can, you can kind of plug them into any decent preamp and away you go. Exactly. Um, so tell me more about the RE320 as far as, you know, the general characteristics uh, of its sound and, and output. You bet. Um, so Mike, the RE320 has a neodymium magnet structure on it, okay. okay? And what you get out of that is more high-end sizzle and a little brighter tone out of the gate okay. um, uh, as compared to the RE20 that has an iron magnet, okay? Um, what you're gonna get with the RE20 um, is a little, a little smoother. The RE320 has a little more sizzle on top. Uh, to bring out the crispness and intelligibility of, of speaking. Um, so they're two different flavors, okay. right? Uh, not any one is is the live all end all for everyone. Right. Um, it's always up to the human voice and yeah. which one makes it easier to do what you need to do. The 320 is pretty balanced when I've listened to it. You know, you've got that warmth, and, but you also have that high end crispness. Exactly. Um, crispness, yep. <laughs> I should say. You bet. If, if you can say it right, it sounds great. There you um, go. There um, you go. So that's the RE320, but then moving up from that uh, is really uh, the most iconic product, Electro Voice has ever made. For sure, no doubt. I mean, we released that mic in 1969, I believe, yeah. and it has been absolutely a juggernaut. I mean, Stevie Wonder recorded songs in the key of life with you an bet. RE20, man. I mean, come the, on. The list, is, the list is so long. <laughs> if it's good enough for Stevie, it's good enough for me, man. So, um, you know, that microphone, it has its its own legend, but um, you know, I, I come from a radio background. I always used RE twenties long before I worked for EV, and man, it's just this warm, punchy sound that I've never heard on anything else. It's almost, I mean, it's indescribable how how great that mic sounds. Um, what are your experiences with it? And do you use it just on voice? I mean, are there other things you can do with it? I've used it on everything, Mike. Uh, seriously, every instrument <laughs> in a modern recording studio, yeah. I've tried this mic on and, and used at one point or another. Incredible on uh, um, wind instruments, brass instruments, saxophones, trombones, 
uh, uh, berry sacks. Um, I've used it everywhere. And, and it's always a beautiful outcome, always. Yeah, um, yeah. I've never been disappointed. Yeah. Um, uh, it's, it's an iconic kick drum mic. It's been used as a kick, sure. one of the best kick drum mics in major studios for 40, 35, 40 years, yeah. right? Uh, again, we didn't build it for that, but studio guys will try every mic to get the optimum sound, and they gravitate towards this for that same reason. It, it, it can handle, because as you mentioned earlier, it's a dynamic. It can handle SPL levels that, a lot of condensers wouldn't be able to, to process uh, mm -hmm. properly. Uh, so dynamic has a higher SPL threshold uh, before distortion. And so you can put this in front of a really loud uh, right. saxophone blaring or trumpet blaring or kick drum right. that's super loud and it, and it doesn't hurt it and it doesn't distort the signal. And that's another big feature for the dynamic uh, microphone. I see a lot of people putting windscreens and pop filters on them, I hear them say they need uh, you know, maybe like an, an, another preamp before their preamp because they're not getting enough gain out of it. Yep. Um, it help me dispel some of those, those myths there about, uh, about that mic. My, my feeling is always less is more, right? right. Um, uh, the RE20 uh, going into a console, whatever you're using, uh, in comparison to a lot of other mics, even our RE320 or the 27, has lower gain, right. okay? So you do have, you turn up the gain a little bit more. Sure. Um, but you don't necessarily need an external preamp added to that. Right. Um, when you introduce more gear, other preamps, you're introducing no inherent noise. Yeah, all and of sorts course of you things. don't want to buy a crappy preamp that has a lot of noise. I that mean, is correct. That's going to make a lot of noise in whatever mic you plug it into, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, from my experience, I've always been in incredibly uh, happy with the result of going directly into a decent preamp and as little EQ as, as needed. Um, yeah. It just sounds great. Um, you know, season to taste, but yeah. light seasoning is better than dumping a whole canister of salt on something. Sure, okay, but with the pop filters and windscreens, we don't, we don't really need that either, right? Adding things, right? It's, you're adding more things. And, and the wonderful thing about all these microphones is that they have multiple layers of plosive filters already built into it, right? right? Yep. Um, so putting something over the top of this, again, is, can change the dynamic quality of what it's picking up and what it sounds like. Um, for the most part, you should not need anything yeah. like that. I mean, like I said, I mean, when I used one in my radio career, uh, you know, there was never a, a windscreen on those mics. Right. I mean, what you learned was proper microphone technique. Exactly. And, you know, number one, you don't want the microphone right in your field of vision. I mean, who wants to look at this thing in my face all day? Right, so you just put it off to the side like this, like a forty-five degree angle, yep. and all of those Most plosives, of those plosives are, are, are shooting going right past you. That's it, correct. It's totally unnecessary. So yep. you know, if, if if you're starting out and you you know just because you see it, don't feel like you need it. I mean that that's silly. So if that RE twenty now has been around for over fifty years, you can see it's got that classic gray finish that was you know just that that uh, iconic look. Um, but, you know, with these microphones showing up more and more on camera these days, um, you know, we were getting feedback that they wanted something that would, that would also look really good on camera. Exactly. And, and that's where this one kind of came in, right? Absolutely. You know, and the matte black finish on that looks great on camera. And uh, you're, you're exactly right. Um, this wasn't necessarily built for being on camera when we originally built it. It was for recording it in a, in a radio station. Now you have something... You know, brand now you gotta new look color. At it. Yeah, yeah right. now you got to look at it. You should look at it. We want everyone to look at it. So. Oh yeah, and so the the RE twenty and the RE twenty black are exactly the same. Absolutely, right? No difference whatsoever, other than the finish. That is correct. Right? That is so, correct. We and do. I'm looking at it, and it's not only black, which is cool, but it's also a very matte. Uh, matte finish, so it's not reflective uh, exactly. of the lights. We've got some good lights in here, and it's it's uh, just nice, uh, you know, not shining at me too much. It it looks so cool. Yeah. I, I love this mic. So yeah. yeah, the RE20 and the RE20 Black otherwise are identical. Um, and then I guess you know what I also want to talk about last but not least in this family is the RE27ND, and and if that one's not reflective, this one is sparkling. <laughs> I love this microphone. It's a, it's a, it's at the other opposite end of the spectrum as far as 
looks are concerned, but but man, this thing looks cool too. Tell me, Absolutely. tell me about this one. Well, the RE twenty seven ND, as you mentioned, that ND stands for neodymium magnet structure. Okay, and as we we spoke about the RE three twenty, also has a neodymium magnet structure. Um, what is that going to get you? It's a little hotter output. Um, a little more detail in the high end and, and mid-range where the vocal lives. Mm -hmm. um, so it just gives you another flavor of the iconic sound of the RE20. And this actually has a few switches on it, actually three different switches. Yep. Um, those are just boost and cut switches or cut switches? They're, yeah, and they're, they're EQ switches. Basically okay. what you're doing is changing the EQ, right? So you, so you have a high pass where you're cutting out all the lows, so you're not... Um, muddying up if you have an inherently low uh, frequency source, either yeah. voice or instrument, um, and you, you don't want that, you can cut it, right? Uh, then there's kind of a mid scoop, right? So you get this stronger low end, nice sizzle on top, and smooth out the mid range a little bit. And then there's also a, a low pass, if I'm not mistaken, on, on the top switch of that. And so the RE27ND then is actually, you know, has a few more options. I would describe it as edgy and kind of forward. It's it's aggressive. Yep. Forward right. Mix, so you're you getting that 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 balance of tone, but it's it's kind of in your face. It's yep. it's. Uh, I, I know actually Ryan Seacrest uses this mic. Yep. Um. And and you know it's kind of that uh, that edgier sound. Right. It's not that classic FM. You know, warm, warm. tones. Yeah. Yep. This has has an edgier sound. So really, I mean, at the end of the day, all of these mics, you know, um, they look similar. The behavior characteristics are, are, are uh, pretty much the same, but the tone is really what changes the tone and the output. So, you know, I, I like to look at it and, you know, people ask, well, what's the right one for me? You know, there's no right answer. I would say, right. try to listen to it if at you all bet. possible. Uh, try to think about what your voice is like now, if you can't listen to it. And, and what it is about your voice that you would like to either accentuate or, or change. Maybe if you've got a really edgy voice already, maybe you want to tone that down Smooth with a 20. Maybe you want to accentuate that and make it really edgy with something like the 27. You maybe bet. you want it really neutral. Um, you've, you've got options. So think about what you want to sound like. Um, and then, you know, there's no wrong answer. It's, right. you know, what flavor ice cream do you like? I mean, you know, it, it, that's what it's all about. You exactly. pick, pick the one that you like and then that becomes your sound. So, exactly. So speaking of sound then, let's, let's spend some time listening to each one of these. I wanna give people a chance to hear the individual characteristics and, and the tone. Um, so let's, uh, me and you, we'll, we'll go through each of these mics, say a little phrase, um, and so they can hear a couple of different voices on them and, and really get a flavor for, for what each mic is capable of. Sounds great, let's do it. This is the sound of the Electrovoice RE320. This is the sound of the Electrovoice RE20. This is the sound of the Electrovoice RE20 Black. This is the sound of the Electrovoice RE27 ND. This is the sound of the Electrovoice RE320. This is the sound of the Electrovoice RE20. This is the sound of the Electrovoice RE20 Black. This is the sound of Electrovoice RE27. Well, like I said, I mean, RE20 is my personal favorite, but you know, they all sound so good. I mean, I can see myself using any one of these, you know, I, and I'd be happy, but, um, you know, this is only one small story and one small part of our microphone family. That's right. Let's look at some live performance mics with our ND family too. Wonderful. Let's do it. Well, Mike, here we have our full line of ND handheld and performance microphones. Um, this is our, our latest line that we've uh, launched, ND standing for neodymium magnet structure. Okay. Uh, again, all of them have it in it. So uh, uh, if you like, I can take you through the different uh, flavors and, and what this is all about. Yeah, let's start. I mean, it looks like a, a wide variety. We've got a bunch of different vocal mics and instrument here. So. Yep. Um, let's start with the vocal mics. Right on, full compliment. And, and you know, one thing about uh, handheld performance microphones or instrument microphones is if you want to improve your sound, the most affordable 
and easiest way to do that right. is to start with a microphone. And yeah. if you you know if you're a singer or or a content creator or whatever you're doing, um, the human voice for the handheld performances is all about sounding the best you can. And it's really important to find the right mic for your voice. That it, a microphone should make it easy to sing. Um, you should be able to sing longer. Uh, you should like the sound of your voice and right. not have to worry about that. So that's what these mics really are good at. Uh, and the different flavors I'll walk you through. So our, the first microphone is the ND76, okay? okay. This is my uh, general purpose, hand it to anybody, they're gonna sound great, okay? okay? Um, it really excels on a small uh, PA system mm -hmm. uh, or a small club system, something like that, because there's acoustical uh, problems and situations that happen in a tight uh, tight venue where this mic really excels at that makes it a very professional produced sound right out of the gate and that's got a cardioid pattern on that one that is correct so it's a cardioid pattern um, that uh, rejects anything outside that cardioid bubble uh, it's got neodymium magnet structure uh, some of the other details that we put into the engineering is a memoriflex grill so if you drop the microphone or something, the grill is not gonna dent, it's spring steel. Um, so your mics are gonna stay looking good. Um, there's an actual four point shock mount under the hood. This isolates inherent handling noise and stage rumble when the microphone is on a microphone stand. Um, very important to isolate it. As we saw on our other microphones in broadcast, a big shock mount with rubber bands hold, isolating it from a stand. Uh, same scenario here, just in a smaller version. What would you say that mic sounds like? It's just what I would call a very sweet produced sound right out of the gate. A uh, nice warm low end to warm it up. Um, very smooth in the mid-range and a nice sizzle up top to bring out the articulation of the human voice. Um, so I, like I said, I can hand that mic to anybody and whether they're great at holding a mic or knowing how to use a mic, they're gonna sound good right out of the gate. And we've got a version with a switch here. That also. is correct. If you want a switched version, uh, we have, it's the exact same microphone, same sonic characteristics, but with an on-off switch on the microphone itself. A lot of schools, churches, things like that, where they don't have a full-time sound man, need the access of on-off switch right on the microphone. Yeah, it can certainly be handy. So yep. uh, the 76 is kind of where it starts, and then jumping up from that is the yep. 86? Correct. The next one in the line is 86. And, and again, all of these uh, dynamic microphones, both uh, per, uh, voice and instrument mics, are what we call large diaphragm dynamics again, as we discussed earlier. Uh, but the 86 then goes, is the step up from the ND76. But again, these are tools, and it's all about matching it to the right voice and the right acoustic situation. The ND86 is a very, very flat microphone, um, not enhanced EQ anywhere around it. Really excels in a larger venue or on a larger PA system which have inherent acoustical problems that are different than the small club scenario right. that we discussed earlier. You don't want to over accentuate anything because that'll take off on you so quick on, on a big PA like that. Exactly correct. So it's a very, very flat, works great on a, on a large PA system or in a large venue. Uh, then we notch up to the ND96. Yeah, this one looks weird. It, I mean, it does. It, it's got that different, it's kind of like a flat head. It's, yeah. it's, it's that's great. Kind of cool though, too. It is. Why, why is that? Um, well, uh, this, this microphone is basically built for a very loud stage scenario. Um, it's uh, gain before feedback is the highest. And what I mean by gain before feedback is, is it's an incredibly loud microphone right out of the gate. So you don't have to turn up the volume on your system or on your gain control introducing noise. Um, it's amazing at rejection sound from anywhere outside its bubble. Okay, okay. Um, so if I'm in a very loud band with an acoustic drummer right behind me and I'm the singer, and He's banging, banging away, right there, right I head. don't wanna pick up that, that sound of those drums. I want to isolate the vocal. Okay. So this mic being incredibly hot, and you'll see that the flat grill is for a reason. I'm literally putting your sound source, your mouth on top of the capsule, okay? Right. So, Whenever, whenever I can get the sound source closer to the, the magnet itself, I'm picking up more sound. So it's, it's okay. a hotter mic, it's a louder mic right out of the gate. Now, you might say, well, if you're so close, what happens with the plosives? And as you see under the hood, we have a stainless steel plosive filter oh. uh, immediately under the grill, plus cloth, 
so the plosives aren't a problem, even though your sound source is right on top of the capsule. So obviously we always encourage people to have their own microphone, right? I mean, Absolutely. you want to choose your microphone for your voice, for your voice. right? Um, but not only that, but it's also, you know, hygienic, right? To be able to, to, to you know, there's spit and gross things going on here. But I, I guess what's, what's cool about this as well is, you know, you, you can wash this very, being stainless steel Absolutely. No big deal. You can, you can sanitize that and, and, and share this mic if you, if you needed to. Right? There you go. And, you know, you know, in today's world, singing, speaking into a microphone, you know, moisture exits your mouth no matter what happens. Right. That ends up in the grill and being able to clean is a really important deal. So that's the, the vocal mics. But moving on then to the instrument mics, yeah. right? Uh, there's only four, but you can do a lot of different instruments with these, right? A absolutely, Mike. You know, the first one in our instrument line is the ND44. Uh, again, um, even though it's a small uh, multi-position microphone, so you can put it anywhere, it, it still has all those same inherent things, ND uh, main structure, neodymium, um, large diaphragm, dynamic, um, but very maneuverable. Uh, you can put this anywhere. Uh, great Tom mic. Um, where it's not in the way of the drummer's sticks, uh, the cable comes out and goes, you know, uh, away and down, so it's not sticking out in camera shots, all that kind of thing. You can put it up underneath a snare very easily because it's so nice and small. Uh, it's an amazing guitar cabinet microphone. If you just need to hang a microphone over the front of your guitar cabinet, uh, it can do that too. The punch and clarity in that ND44 is really where it lives. So uh, rack toms. Uh, guitar cabinets, things like that, where you need the punch and clarity to get it out in the mix. So very versatile, not only in the instruments that it can, uh, you know, do very well on, but also in its positioning, right? You can get exactly. it into tight spaces, get it in, in a cool spot. So, okay, so that's the 44, and then yep. this one is? This is the ND46, kind of the big brother. Uh, similar characteristic is it does have a push button and locking pivoting mechanism. Oh, so cool. for positioning, again, small format. Um, in the relation to the two, this one is just a little bit warmer. Uh, you're using uh, lower frequency instruments on something like that. Um, I've used it on trumpets, trombones, saxophones, guitar cabinets, bass cabinets, low toms. Um, it's absolutely amazing. It's rich, it's warm, it's huge. That is the ND46. Well, I think it's, it's cool because it's actually kind of like a nod, the, the design, the look of it actually kind of looks like um, some of our loudspeakers. It's, you know, the, the back of the it kind of looks structure. like a woofer. It does, yeah. You know, and then you, you see this, this, this pattern of the venting here actually looks like the same pattern as, as the grill of our loudspeakers. So exactly. uh, you can see that cohesive uh, branding, and, and man, this thing looks like a, like a rocket ship, like it's just gonna take off on you. It's, it's, that's a cool looking mic. Not only do they look great, they sound absolutely amazing. And okay. again, this is part of your sonic signature of whatever group you're in or whatever you're doing, whether you're a sound man or an artist, using the right microphone is how it transfers to an audience. So really important stuff. Okay, what else we got? All right, then we have the ND68. This is our kick drum. Uh, low frequency mic, right? So you put that in a kick drum. Uh, it has a voicing of what I would call a modern sound. While it's a large diaphragm dynamic microphone, so it can take a lot of SPL, uh, it's tailored a little bit more for lower frequencies in that kick drum, bringing out that low thump, uh, bringing out just enough high sizzle to get the snap. Um, works amazing on low toms, on bass rigs, uh, if you're miking up a bass cabinet, things like that. Um, again, there's no right or wrong answer. Try it if that's uh, if that's what works for you with the sound you're looking for. It's amazing. Yeah, I've seen people use that even on, as a vocal mic. You know, Absolutely. They, you know, uh, like a baby RE20. You yeah. want that warm? You know, not quite the same thing, but but it's got that that warmth that that you could do some some cool stuff with that. Absolutely. Know, even beyond its intended use, and then. This little guy hanging off on yeah. the end, what's that one now? This is the ND66. This is what we call a pencil condenser. Um, but it's not just that, um, in, in that it's an end address uh, with a push button. It's your standard pencil address, end, end address condenser. Um, with the push button, I can, I can maneuver this and position this in a multitude of different ways, which makes it a very, very flexible condenser microphone. So for a condenser, you're, you're going to use that 
as overheads on a drum kit, sure. okay? Yep. Um, you might even want that over your hi-hat or under your hi-hat, depending uh, on what sound you're going for. What's nice about its maneuverability is I can squeak it in on top or underneath something very easily. Um, on a grand piano, you open up the top, you put two of these uh, from each side into the grand piano. It's non obtrusive. Okay. Uh, it allows cabling and everything else nice to go. Nice low there. profile, right? And you because bet. you can position that, you can squeeze it into exactly. tight spaces. So that's what the bend is for. Correct. And then I, I see a switch here on yep. the side. There's, there's pad about? switches, and, and so, so if your signal is just too hot, you're picking something up. I can knock down uh, the dB on it by 10 dB or 20 dB or flat. Yep, and then it has a voicing switch on it also. Oh, that's uh, the one on the front here. Yep, okay. correct. Yeah. So incredibly versatile, from acoustic guitars to overheads for drums to pianos, anything that would require a condenser to pick up all those frequencies, uh, an amazing tool. Yeah, I mean, anything on a live stage, if you got to mic it, we've got a solution here in this family. So uh, exactly. we can really do it all. So um, now actually some of these, the uh, mics, namely the vocal mics, mm -hmm. are also available as wireless versions. So I want to check out the wireless stuff uh, of our RE3 family. So we just got done looking at all of our wired mics, but uh, this wireless is fantastic. We just came out with this just a couple of years ago, yeah? Correct. This is the RE3 wireless systems from Electrovoice, uh, and it is our latest technology. Um, in taking into account all the FCC rule changes and all that kind of thing. And we've maximized the ability to use wireless in pretty much any location. So all of the wireless is available with those ND mics, the 76, 86, 96. Um, I've actually got one with a capsule on it, uh, an RE520, right? Yeah. What, what's this one all about now? Okay, and also available in a wired version is the RE420 and the RE520. These are condenser capsules, okay? okay? So when needing or wanting a condenser in a handheld version, they're also available. We can, we're just showing them off here now uh, as part of the wireless solution with an RE3 wireless system and the RE520 capsule. Yeah, nice to have that, that, that condenser version. So there's five different capsules available for the handheld wireless, which is, which is outstanding. And, and they're interchangeable as well, which I think is really cool. You can actually, you know, just, just, you know, unscrew the head and, and, and change that out. So, you know, you, you can have a, a bunch of different heads and depending on the application, what performers using it that night, you can, you can switch those out. So there that, you go. That's super cool. But the bands you mentioned, uh, on RE3, uh, specifically, um, there's one unique one with the 6M band, right, that is kind of unique to EV, right? It is. Um, you're right. When the FCC changed the rules and kicked everyone out of the 600 megahertz range, um, they did dedicate uh, a section of the 600 band with um, for wireless only. So what is nice about and what we've taken advantage uh, of is one of the three bands we offer is 6M which is in that wireless only section of 600 megahertz, okay? It's in the mid 600. What you get there is that if you need between one and four units that travel or move all around the country, or if you just need one unit, no matter where you are in the country, you can order a 6M band and be pretty sure <laughs> it's going to work. Right, uh, there yeah. is nothing else that's gonna interfere with it. Yeah, so you can see with the construction actually of, of, of really the, the transmitters here, this is the handheld and both the belt pack, metal belt pack, but still nice and compact. Got some uh, battery charger leads here so you can uh, just drop it in a charger to, uh, for rechargeable batteries if you're using those, no problem. Um, you know, just feels like a really well-built system. You know, the, the receivers look cool, half rack space wide, but we've mounted two of them side by side with this rack kit. There's a wide variety of accessories available, antennas, um, splitters, uh, all, all that good stuff. So really you can build up whether you're using one or, or multi-channel systems. Um, you can do an awful lot with RE3. Um, so one thing I really like about this receiver as well is it actually shows you a, a lot of metering to tell you what's going on with your system. You can see I've already synced it up previously, but when I turn on that belt pack, you can see I've got a good strong RF signal, um, you know, so, so it gives you that confidence. 
I don't have any input going into this right now, but otherwise there'd be audio jumping on the on the audio metering there as well. Um, so, I mean, that's really handy when you're looking to just know what's going on with the transmitters, right? Exactly. Pro metering, just so you can visually see what's happening with your system. Do I have good RF signal? Do I have a good strong audio uh, signal? Do I need to adjust anything? Mm -hmm. um, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, real pro features all the way around. And maybe most importantly on the screen, you've got actually battery metering. It's not just a low light indicator when the battery's almost dead. It's actually a three step uh, so it's telling me kind of the status of the battery too. So, you know, if someone's going to ramble uh, on for far too long that you may need to say, hey, well, we're going to lose you soon. So yep. um, really cool stuff. But all, all, all the group channel uh, and frequency information displayed, um, just just great units, man. RE3 is is rock solid, sounds great. And with that wide variety of, of capsules and input devices, um, it can really do anything you want it to. You bet. From wireless uh, guitar, bass instruments that way, uh, we've got all the accessories. Um, to mic up uh, saxophones out on a marching field, we've got those accessories. Uh, we have it all. Head warns, uh, micro head warns, uh, anything you need. And, and again, the goal of wireless is to sound exactly like wired and that's where we really ex excel at wireless technology it should not change the sound it should not color your sound and for all instruments and vocals that's the goal of uh great wireless and and we do it better than anybody well ev is a transducer company no doubt about it so we talked about speakers uh but now there's no doubt in my mind man um microphones uh are at the core of what we do so very well exactly correct mike there you go